I'm going to go down a very <clears throat> controversial path and talk about crisis actors that CBS News uses. On my left is a video recording from the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in Sandy Hook, Connecticut. On my right is a, the Sandy Hook shooting took place in 2012, December 14th of 2012 in Sandy Hook, Connecticut. The screen on my right is an explosion at a gender reveal party that killed a woman in Iowa. That is from October 28th of this year, 2019. Um, almost seven years later. Let me play the two videos for you. I'll first play the one for Sandy Hook. And look, there's a guy here on the right. Look who, who they've got, who they've got um, to speak to, who an eyewitness to the massacre in Sandy Hook. And by an eyewitness to this tragedy. Gene Rosen is a longtime resident of Newtown and he lives right next door to the firehouse that is behind us. His own son went to the Sandy Hook Elementary School and yesterday he took in six young children from the school who were traumatized by the attack. Thank you for being with us, Gene. Good morning. Good morning to you. We know how difficult this is for you. Taking in those six children, what was that like? The children were so frightened. I didn't know why they were on my lawn. I didn't know how they got there. I looked outside and I saw these six children, and I thought that they were practicing a play or Cub Scouts. And I went and I approached them. Now I'm going to stop here and scroll to where he's back on the screen. Oh, there he is again. What was, did you understand what was happening? I didn't. The, yeah. I, I had no idea what had happened. Okay, now on my right, seven years later, this last October 28th, just two days ago, 2019, there was an explosion at a gender reveal party. Now, the gentleman on the left for the Sandy Hook shooting, his name was Gene Rosen. They said, Gene, Gene Rosen, a witness to the Sandy Hook shooting, who took these helpless kids into his front yard. On the right is Gary Rose, Roseboom, not Rosen, but Roseboom, a retired pastor. He's got the same voice, similar features, same mannerisms, same goatee, same glasses. Let me play some of this for you. What was supposed to be a joyous occasion at this rural Knoxville home ended in tragedy. CBS News. Saturday afternoon, we received this press release that reads in part, the Marion County Sheriff's Office received a 911 call of an explosion. A gender reveal announcement resulted in the explosion, which caused a flying piece of debris to strike the victim through Knoxville. We spoke with people on the town square. I'm sure. Now, this is a guy just on the town square, a retired pastor. I'll see what he has to say. No one thought that this could end tragically. I mean, who would have thought? Gary Roseboom is a retired pastor in town and has lived in Knoxville for more than two decades. He tells us the tragedy is still sinking in. My heart just sank for the family. I mean, it, it's something that's supposed to be fun and exciting. And you, you know, you have your family there and then, wow, in an instant, everything changed. Everyone we spoke with says they're... Let's see if I can find some more of them here. I don't think he's in there again. So they basically put him in there for about uh, roughly 20, 20 seconds or so. Now let's look at these two guys. Now here's uh, Gary. Now they didn't change the first name. The first name of the guy on the left is Gary from seven years ago. The name of the guy on the right is Gary. Um, the Gary, the guy on the right is Gary Roseboom. This is Gary Roseboom. This is Gary R Rosen. Gary Rosen was just a witness. This is a guy that is the guy on the right. Gary Rosenboom is a retired pastor who just happened to be sitting in the town square. And he just happens to look just like this guy over here. Now, there are some differences. Now, keep keep. So you get a better shot of him here. See, right there, it's, it's the same guy. It's no doubt the same guy. He's just got sunglasses on here. 
he's he doesn't have his clip-ons here and let's get the close-up of him here the close-up now if you look his ears are different his nose is different now now this picture on the left is seven years ago so i don't know maybe he he's had some work done on his nose but even his ear is different um Look how twisted and weird his ear is here. He's got this, looks like somebody's been chewing on his earlobe, but but he shot from his right side. Here he shot from his left side. The nose is a little bit different, but everything else is the same. The color of the hair, the goatee's been shaved down and almost shaved off here, but the, um, the turkey neck, he's got the same turkey neck. He's got the same hairline. Look how they kind of cropped the shot, the close-up shot, so you can't see his full head or his forehead. Here, let's see what they've done here. But the voice, listen to the voice. The voice is identical. Lived in Knoxville for more than two decades. He tells us the tragedy is still sinking in. My heart just sank for the family. I mean, it... here and he'll go over here and listen to his voice idea what had happened there seemed to be a bus driver well, i don't quite understand it picked them up so i know you're going to say well there's some differences his ear is different his nose is different the voice is similar the voice is the giveaway i think here i mean what's the chance we're going to find two guys in two separate states over seven years apart that look almost identical the newer picture of the guy on the right looks like he's lost some weight he's definitely lost some weight he's got more uh, definition in his chin his nose has been worked down his nose has been whittled down a little bit so he doesn't have the big hook he's got a hook nose over here here he's got a nice standard nose but ladies and gentlemen this is the same guy now i i'm not certain what their point is i think this this is what i think the networks do okay you're in a small town where there's been a massive shooting or a bombing or a tragedy and if if you've ever experienced something like this, like my father was murdered, and when I found out my father had been murdered, I collapsed on the floor. I just completely, it was like somebody, like Muhammad Ali had punched me in the stomach, and I dropped to the floor like a wet bag of sang, sand, sobbing. Now, now, these aren't actual parents or anything like that, but if you had just witnessed children get shot, or if you had just witnessed, you know, some tragedy like this you wouldn't be as composed like this guy on the left allegedly saw these poor kids he wasn't a witness to the shooting he wasn't a witness to the bombing over here but but when you experience something tragic like this you don't want to talk to anybody i can tell you this from personal experience you absolutely positively do not want to talk to anybody but your family now this guy wasn't directly related but come on what's the likelihood that they find the same looking guy in two different states i mean iowa is probably 1800 miles away from connecticut sandy hook took place in connecticut this took place in iowa and what i think the networks do i don't think it's deception what i was saying is that you're so distraught you're so um ripped apart by these tragedies if you really had experienced it or seen it you're not going to be able to talk so i think they keep on staff a variety of actors that work for the network <clears throat> that they say okay we're going to say you saw this and you had little kids come into your yard or we're going to have you know, because they can't talk to the actual witnesses because the actual witnesses if anybody actually saw any of these tragedies they'd be completely ripped apart and wouldn't be able to talk now my theory is they just keep a staff of quote crisis actors unquote on staff so they have something to tell the people and make it look as real as possible but my question is why would they do this this is inauthentic it's not real it's phony it's fake news this is literally fake news i don't care about this this is the same guy this is nine years later this guy's had his nose work down and he's lost some weight but look how they cropped his head you can't see the top of his head and they've got him in sunglasses. It's, it's a different pair of sunglasses, but they're similar. He's got clip-ons or um, shades on there, so you can't see the color of his eyes. They disguise him just a little bit, just enough. He's had his hair trimmed. He trimmed off his goatee. It's not as thick. But this is obviously the same man. So they either keep these people on staff so they have something to broadcast to put in front of everybody's eyes on the evening news, or they're trying to push a certain agenda by 
appealing to your your soft spot, you to to the thing inside of you that says, "Oh, these poor kids got killed," and this guy even said it was bad, you know. And they they got they got sympathetic people that sympathize towards the anti gun movement. Um, I'm not certain what they'd be trying to push with a reveal party where the woman got blown up in the reveal party. I mean, it's not like going to be an anti explosive. Uh, movement. Um, it's not going to be anti-reveal parties or transgender or anything like that. I don't know what the point is. So they have a certain group of people on staff that are employed to push their agenda, to push their message, to appeal to your your tender side, to appeal to your you know to your compassionate side, to get you to go oh. And so they have to have the witnesses and the people that were, quote, there, unquote, to build their story, to make it look legitimate in your eyes, in the audience's eyes. Let me know what you think. But I just noticed that these two guys are the same. They're identical. Even though he's had some work done in his nose, it's the same mouth. Look at the mouth, the way he sits, the way he angles his head. He's even got a down jacket on here. Um, he must be employed by the network. This isn't just some schmuck that was sitting on the town square in Iowa. This this guy doesn't even live in Connecticut. He didn't see anything, and no kids came into his yard. It's a complete fabrication, absolute fabrication. But let me know what you think and uh, in your comments below. Subscribe. Stay tuned. Bye.